Today I'm going to go over Companion. Companion is a software that basically turns your computer, phone, or a tablet into a Stream Deck. Now if you don't know what a Stream Deck is, check out my video here or in the description below. But basically it's a hardware device that lets you do different tasks on your computer. This is going to be a two-part series. Uh, in this video I'm going to go over setting up and using Companion. But in part two, I'm going to go over how you can use Companion with your Stream Deck. Now, if you already have a Stream Deck or are thinking about getting one, Companion really expands the capabilities of that Stream Deck as well. Let's get into it. If you've been wondering whether or not you should be purchasing a Stream Deck or something similar like X Keys, but you don't want to spend the $80 to $500 on a hardware device, well, a software solution might be the answer for you. Now, there are plenty of software solutions out there like Touch Portal, UpDeck, but Companion is a very powerful, highly supported software that can even be controlled not only by your Stream Deck, but by any device on your network, such as a computer, iPad, or tablet, without having to install any additional software on those devices. Now, even if you do buy a Stream Deck in the future, this software is perfect for that future purpose. And best of all, this software is free. My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. Today we're going to go over Companion by BitFocus. Now Companion uses a web interface to configure and control the software. That means after you configure it, all you need is a web browser on your computer or on the remote device that's controlling the software. So let's go through really quick the configuration of Companion and I'm going to show you a little demo on how I use it. So I've installed Companion and after we launch it, you get to this very simple interface. Now I'm going to go over this part of the window later on, but to launch the application or to launch the interface, we do launch GUI here. And after we do that, it opens up it in your default browser here. But the first thing you want to do, or you'll see here, is it's a very simple interface. And I will say up front, it's not the most elegant interface, but it does work. And before using uh, anything in Companion uh, or setting up any buttons, we need to add modules. And modules are the way uh, Companion communicates with a certain device or software that you're trying to control. So in my case, and for this demo, I'm going to be controlling uh, OBS, and then I'm going to be controlling my A10 Mini here, video switcher. And But in order for me to use OBS, I need to install an OBS plugin called OBS WebSocket Module. And then for my A10 Mini, the requirement there is I need to have my A10 Mini plugged into my network via the Ethernet cable. And then there are other modules that don't require anything at all. It just works right out of the box. So before we add any modules, let me give, give you my first kind of negative or gripe about this piece of software, and it has to do with the interface. Now, if I want to add a module and I want to add it by category or by my manufacturer, these are basically pretty useless buttons. You'll see why. So if I add ca by category, you get this very long list. So now if I try to scroll down on the list, I can't, right? The list is just way too long. Uh, same thing with add by manufacturer. So the best way to add a module is by adding the search. But for this demo, I'm going to show you how I can control OBS and my ATEM Mini with the companion software. Now, the nice thing about this is I can combine different commands from different modules into one. So I'm going to show you a demo how I control OBS and my ATEM Mini all with one command at the same time. So let's add the modules for this demo. So I'm going to need the OBS module. So I'm going to search by OBS and it's OBS Studio. And then I'm going to put in my target IP, which is my local machine here. And these are things I configured already in the WebSocket module. And my password is that, apply changes. Now I'm going to go back to instances. Now it's going to give me an error because OBS is not uh, turned on right now. So I'm going to launch OBS right now. And there we have it fixed. Now it's the status is okay. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is add the ATEM mini uh, module here. Uh, I can type in ATEM, black magic design. I'm gonna put in my target here. And this is this has to do with my local network here. Apply changes. Go back to my instances here. And now I have both my modules with the status OK. Now that we have the modules installed, now we're ready to configure our buttons. So if we go to the buttons tab here, you'll see there's a button layout here that looks like the Stream Deck XL with 32 buttons here. Then you have this gray area here. Uh, that represents the Stream Deck, the regular Stream Deck with 15 buttons. And of course, I have the Stream Deck Mini, which has six buttons. But for the sake of this demo, I'm not going to worry about the limitations of my Stream Deck here. I'm just going to go with the default layout here. Now, the default layout here has this uh, page up, page down, page number. Now, Companion supports up to 99 pages of buttons. And depending on your device that you're using this with, uh, the paging is can be very useful to you. Now we are going to set up the buttons first for let's say the ATEM Mini and then we're going to set up the buttons for OBS after that. So to set up a button let's click on a button here and we're going to get this right area here. Now I can set up other page up, page down, and page number buttons. You can actually jump to different pages if you want uh, but we're going to create a regular button here. Now, there are different things that you can do. You can do, there's a key down or on and a key up. So you can think of an example of an intercom system where let's say I'm on mute by default on Zoom. I press the button down, I speak, and then after I'm done speaking, I lift out the button or I release the button. So while the button is pressed, I'm unmuted. While the button is released, that'll mute me back up. But here we're gonna just do worry about the key down. Here we're selected on this portion right here. And I'm gonna say this is cam one. And here we have all the different commands that we can do based on the different modules that have been installed. So there's the ATEM one, here's the OBS one. And so we're gonna do the set input on program. And that's what I wanna do. And then it's already set to camera one here. And so that's already set, right? So that's one way to create a button. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this button here and show you an easier way to do this. Now, because we have the modules installed, a lot of times the manufacturers will install or have presets. So I'm gonna go to the presets tab here on the right side, click on the module I have here, and I wanna do program. And this, they already have, presets here. They're like templates that I can use. So I can just go ahead and click on that, drag and drop that over to the preset I want to do. And that'll automatically switch my ATEM mini input into that part. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all my inputs here. And there you go. Now I have those buttons set. So now that we have all our buttons here, based on the presets, we can actually go in here and customize it, even though it came from a preset, and customize it any way we want. So we can con kind of configure this with any name we want, but they've really done all the work for us. Uh, for example, there's this area called instance feedback, and it basically listens to what the camera input is on. And if, for, the, for example, this is cam one, right? So if it's on input one, make the background red. Basically, it's telling you which input is live right now. So if I switch to all my A10 mini here to cam two, that'll switch the button to red, three, four, and so forth. But now let's get into how we can execute these commands. Right now, we're in the configuration page. So when I click on these buttons, it goes to the configuration of those. So the way we get to the buttons layout is there are these three different things here. There's the emulator, the web buttons, and the mobile buttons. Emulator, if we click on that, it really gives you kind of an emulation of a stream deck. And I can actually click on these commands. You can't see it right now, but the input on my ATEM Mini is changing right now. Uh, then there's the web buttons. This is for, of course, other computers. And then there is the mobile buttons, which this is supposedly good for phones. The, I think the web view is good for computer screens and tablets. But of course, you can use this for tablets as well. 
Now to show you that this is working, actually working, I'm gonna show you what my input is right now. Uh, let's move this over to here and let's go into my web buttons here. As I change the input, I only have really two cameras set right now, but uh, let me switch between cam one and cam two. And I have my GoPro here as input two. I don't have anything in input three or four right at the moment. This is cam one, this is cam two. So I'm gonna quickly uh, program OBS where I wanna be able to switch scenes. So again, I can click on this, set up a regular button, and then go to OBS and see the different commands that I want to do. So this one, I, I just really want to change scenes, right? So I can go into typing change scene here. And then after that, it'll show my different scenes in the drop down menu here. But of course, what we want to do to make our lives easier is to use the presets. So let's go to the presets tab, OBS, scene to program. And now our different scenes are showing up there. Main, let's say our guest, and our side-by-side -side view here. And of course, we can go in here and say, let's say side-by-side -side is not looking good. So I can go ahead and change the, uh, c customize the text, but it's it will still change to the side-by-side -side scene. So now I'm going to quickly show you this in action and show you that it's working. I have OBS there in the background, but I'm going to go ahead and launch the web buttons. And now I'm going to switch scenes. As you can see in OBS, it's switching the scenes here. And then of course, these camera angles are working as well. Now where it becomes very powerful is combining a couple of commands together. Now, the one issue I have here is that I can't find a way to combine different preset buttons. So we're gonna have to create this from scratch here. So I'm gonna click on this button here. And what I wanted to do is show switch to camera one and switch to the main scene with one push of a button. And then what I'm gonna do for this button is here is switch to camera two and then switch to my side by side uh, scene in OBS. So let's set those up here. And again, we're gonna have to do this from scratch as a regular button. First, we're gonna look up the ATEM set input to camera one, so that's set. And then we're gonna do another one here. Uh, let's, let's search for scene, change scene in OBS, and we're gonna change that to the main one here. Uh, let's call it C1. Now we can create this one from scratch, this button here from scratch, or we can make a copy of this one, let's say, we're gonna hit copy, click on the button you wanna copy in the destination. So now let's click on this C1 and rename it to C2. Make sure this changes to camera two and make sure this changes to the side-by-side -side scene. Okay, so let's see this in action. So when I click on C2, it'll change to camera two and my side-by-side -side view here. And there it goes. I have my side-by-side -side view and the input to this camera. Now, as you can see, if I go back to C1, it'll go back to the main camera, C2, and the main scene, I should say. Now, you can see there's a little bit of, it's a little bit jarring, because what's happening is, in OBS, it's doing a transition, and in my A10 Mini, it's just cutting to the camera. So it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a jarring effect. So if we go into OBS here, I can change this to cut, and this should be a little bit better. Uh, there's still that little bit of delay. So what you can do in Companion is have a little bit of a delay, and you'll have to change that around a little bit to see what works best for you and your setup. But this is a kind of showing that this is working, kind of switching between the two scenes, having two commands with from two different modules, uh, executing the command. Now I told you I was gonna get back to this portion of the launch interface here. And what we wanna do is now enable remote uh, control of our companion setup here. So right now it's set at localhost, and that means my computer here can only be the one to control companion. But if we change the GUI interface here to one of our network cards. Now I have my Mac mini here 
connected via uh, Wi-Fi and a wired network. So that's why I have two interfaces here. But it, most of you will only see one if you're only connected to, let's say, Wi-Fi. So let's connect it to my wired network here. That means I have to just type in this address here on any device on my network so I can control the interface here. So now what you're seeing on the bottom right portion of the screen is my iPad. And I've already put in the address to my local machine here to Companion. And it's running on port 8000. And now I'm going to show you, and I have OBS running in the back to show you, give you a demo. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on the mobile buttons here and it opens up in a new tab. I can click on full screen to kind of give it a full interface here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and show you it working in action here. I could change the camera input and I'm just tapping on my iPad right now and it's just switching the 8 to mini and then I can click on those buttons. It's changing the scene in OBS as you can see there. And of course our combination buttons, I can click on there and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, right? So this is kind of a powerful way to do it. And you can do this on the phone. You can do this on another computer. Let's say you have another person, a camera operator, or someone who's just doing the camera switching for you, but they're not on your main machine. You can have someone doing it remotely. Or let's say you're away from the computer and you're sitting down in the event and you just want to be able to switch the scenes or control it from your seat. You can do it like that as well. So that's pretty powerful. Now I've given you an overview of how to configure Companion and then also giving you a demo of it in action. But you may be asking, why do I need Companion? Well, it's a way to kind of streamline a bunch of processes that you may have. So for example, I wanted to switch scenes in OBS. I wanted to change my input in my A10 Mini. Let's say I want to change the lighting settings. Now if Companion supports controlling the lighting settings, now, I don't have to go to two or three different interfaces to control all these things. I can combine all these tasks into one interface. Now, if you want to see what Companion can control and what modules it has, you can go to the BitFocus website and go to the support list up here, and it'll show you all the modules it does support. Now, actually, this is not all the modules. There are more modules because they just did a release not too long ago. So if you go to the change log, on their GitHub page. And yes, this is an open source uh, project or software. And these are all the, all the new modules that it does support here. So they're constantly improving it, constantly um, adding more modules and constantly fixing bugs that may come up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now in part two, I will go over how the Stream Deck works with the Companion software. Now, if you have a, the Stream Deck already, you can use the Companion software together with the Stream Deck software. And if you don't have a Stream Deck yet, this software is the perfect companion for that future purchase. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.